Hello guys, in today's video we'll explore the spare part uh, differences that set the charger damper uh, 3 apart from uh, 3.1 To do this we have a charger damper uh, 3 and the upgrade kit that uh, converts it uh, to 3.1 The main difference is that the compression piston changes along with the entire low speed compression unit allowing for a better oil flow. Uh, the upgrade kit also gives you the ability uh, to change uh, the valving of the high speed compression and the high speed rebound. So far uh, compression in addition to the standard tune you also get a heavy tune. Meanwhile for rebound tuning uh, besides the standard uh, option you also have a light and a heavy tune now let's see what is inside the kit this is the packaging once we open it we see that it is divided uh, into smaller bags this is the IFP spring visually is exactly the same the socket tool that loosens the compression piston a bag containing the needle for the high speed compression the pyramid according to Roxox and a check spring for the check valve in the rebound piston the spring is provided as an upgrade for the old mechanism that does not have a spring and relies on the bending of the check seam whereas with the spring it moves freely a high speed compression knob that says charger 3.1 instead of 3 which is right in the old one so everyone will know you have an upgrade and some seams to help tune the compression and the rebound We see that the small seams are for the rebound and the large ones for the compression. So by buying this kit, Roxox gives us the ability to tune. Here we see the seam stack in the compression piston. And here we see the seam stack in the rebound piston. Here we see the check valve we mentioned earlier. It activates by bending. And of course all the mechanisms that affect the compression. First we see the compression assembly, which is essentially the base of the compression piston and is responsible for high speed compression. Inside it passes the low high speed cam assembly. At first glance they look uh, the same, but we see that uh, in the new one the hole where the cam assembly passes is larger. If we unscrew the compression bolt, we will see that the old one has an O-ring that holds the check seam. while the new one works with a spring. If we remove the check seam, we will see the compression piston. Immediately, we notice a significant difference in shape. There is a small difference in the oil flow holes for the check valve. This is where the oil flows when the damper does the rebound. But the biggest difference is in the holes responsible for the high speed compression. The old one has small holes while the new has bigger. So this is the high flow compression piston. As mentioned earlier, in the new compression assembly, the shaft passing through the cam assembly is larger. So let's look at the cam assemblies. This is the old red one. This is the new brown one and it is quite a bit larger. 
through this the oil flows for low speed compression. The screw that moves the needle for low speed compression work in the same way. These are the holes from which the oil for low speed compression exits and goes towards the IFP piston. And here are the holes where the oil enters and uh, we can see that in the new one they are significantly larger. We also see the oil flow path here and the needle that opens and closes the path for low speed compression. If we assemble the entire compression assembly, we will see how the pyramid needle uh, of high speed compression moves. However, it should be noted that this mechanism has a paradoxical feature. The needle of high speed compression does not interfere with the seam stack of high speed compression, but opens and closes this hole in the damper, which is before the seam stack. Here we can see how the pyramid changes the oil flow of high speed. This is paradoxical because we used to see a mechanism that directly presses the seam stack of high speed compression, not a needle. Mechanisms that directly modify the pressure and oil flow on the seam stack. Finally, let's look at the rebound piston. What Roxox provides uh, as an upgrade is changing the way the check valve works. We loosen the screw and lift the entire piston as at its bottom is the check valve. So that we do is remove the floor and a ring that gives a bit of uh, flexibility to the check valve and replace them with a rebound spring. So we first place the spring and then the check seam, being careful not to pitch it. Then we put the piston in and screw it back in. Be cautious as it consists of two parts held together to prevent the rotation with a pin. We apply the proper torque and finally we check if the check valve works properly. That's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.